Good. All right. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everybody. At this time, we will call to order the regular meeting of the Suffern Central Board of Education for Tuesday, March 26, 2024. Let the record reflect all board members are present. Um, we have no executive session tonight, so we are going to move right to the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <clears throat> Student report. Thing. Is it on now? Okay. Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to start off by just talking about what's going to go on at the high school in the next couple of weeks. But first, I'd like to congratulate everyone in the musical. This past weekend, they had performances going on all weekend, and every single show was amazing. Um, there's so much talent at the high school, and it was so amazing to see everyone perform. Um, it's still Youth Art Month, March, and National Art Honor Society has been going to elementary schools, Emerald Schools and has been doing activities for Youth Art Month. Um, today, there was a peer leadership workshop. I've mentioned peer leadership before. It's when seniors have a group of freshmen and they take them in as their buddies. Um, so there was a workshop for that today. Um, tonight, the World Language Honor Society had their induction. There's students being inducted to French Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, Italian Honor Society, and American Sign Language also. Um, now, then after spring break, once you get back from spring break, um, English and History Honor Society will have their induction on April 9th. On April 11th, we are hosting the Speech and Debate Finals in the library, which is a regional competition. On April 11th, um, at night, there's the Music Honor Society induction, so there's a lot of inductions going on in the spring. Um, and then Friday the 12th is the end of quarter three, so we're in the home stretch of the school year. And on Saturday the 13th, we have an ACT exam at the high school. That's it. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. All right. 1.08, the minutes of the regular meeting of March 5th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Ms. Dickman, second. Second. Mr. Shapiro. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. All those against, any abstentions? Aye. Dr. Nick Pon and Ms. Dickman abstain. One point zero nine superintendent comments. Thank you very much. I do have a few comments, and more importantly, I have some folks I'd like to uh, highlight here this evening. So, standing up. At the side of the boardroom, we have our Suffern Robotics team. Good job. Suffern Robotics is a team that we're very proud of, and it's a competitive team that participates in the FIRST Tech Challenge. Each year, FIRST releases a new game challenge in September, and teams work diligently to design, build, and program a robot that can achieve all the elements of the game. Students meet regularly after school and during unit lunch all year round. In addition to building a successful robot, FIRST teams are encouraged to participate in outreach, and our team has excelled in that area as well, including a visit to Offgang Architects, helping RP Connor students begin a PBL unit, and helping local cit senior citizens with their tech devices at the Suffern Library. Under the direction of coaches George Mugno and Alex Goldstein, Suffern Robotics has attended three qualification tournaments in our region. Most recently, the Suffern Robotics team competed in the first Tech Challenge New York Excelsior Championship this weekend. 28 teams from across New York State competed for the chance to qualify for the World Championship. We are proud to say that the Suffern Robotics team was recognized with second place for the Innovate Award and third place for the Inspire Award. The Innovate Award celebrates a team that thinks imaginatively and has the ingenuity, creativity, and inventiveness to make their designs come to life. The Inspire Award is given to the team that best embodies the challenge of the FIRST Tech Challenge program. The team that receives this award is a strong ambassador for FIRST programs and a role model for FIRST team. This team is a top contender 
for many other judge awards and is a gracious competitor. Congratulations to the robotics team for a strong season, and you certainly embody not just creating an incredible robot device that can really play the game, but for your gracious professionalism as well. So congratulations, everyone. And I think some of our I think some of our leaders from the robotics team have a few words and perhaps even a quick little demonstration to share. So take it away. So hello folks, new team 7.86, Self Robotics, the local high school robotics team. So as Dr. Gunnison said, throughout the year we create a robot that is given by us by certain tasks. So we have to create the robot that can complete like the games that are given for a video by the first tech challenge. And going into more specifically what this year's challenge was, because every year we get a new challenge. Today, this year's goal was to understand how we could pick up hexagonal pixels from the floor and put them on the backboard. We also had the challenge of being able to lift our robot onto a bar so it wouldn't be touching the floor. And then we also had the challenge of launching a plane across the field so it could land in the designated launch zone. So now I'll let my teammates go into a little bit more of how we came to these final designs because it was definitely a long road throughout the year and a little bit more of who we are and what we do. Hi, so first of all, we like to help our freshmen by focusing on four fundamentals of engineering, CAD, programming, documentation, fabrication. We also hold a couple of workshops to help us get used to all of the new equipment for, you know, that we need to get used to in the workshop. Uh, a big part of this year's, like, game is the scoring guides, the FTT scoring guides we use to basically look for what we wanted to do with our robot. And then we together decided that we we're going to break up into four teams to take on four different parts of our robot. As you can see here, the plane launcher, the grippers, the arm, which I cannot lift up right now, the arm and the lift. And with this, we had teams consisting of both upper and lower classmen so that we can have a better environment. So this year, we actually came up with an idea for the intake called the grippers. And we actually modeled it based off a human hand. So if you can see, we have artificially created human tendons, the superficial tendon on the back, and the extensor tendon on the inside that allows it to actuate easily and intake two pixels at a time, which is the limit for the challenge. It also has a thumb in the middle that easily separates the pixels into the two container areas as you're driving into it. So continuing with how the gripper uh, is modeled after a human hand, uh, we also attached it to an arm, which resembles a human arm. And in a little while, you, you'll get to see, right now it just runs across the length of the robot, but it can actually rotate around uh, so we can pick up pixels on this side and then place them on the other side. As part of our challenge this year, we had to hang our robot onto a bar, which we call a truss. The way we did that this year was by attaching a C bracket underneath our robot's arm right here. Uh, with regards to the drone launcher or the plane launcher that we mentioned before, uh, you can see that is this little slanted piece here. There's a drone loaded into it that I won't remove right now. Here's another picture of it. We basically used uh, latex surgical tubing for its elasticity and made the slingshot with um, this whole mechanism here is hooked up to a servo and it pulls out this pin and when it does so, the plane is launched by the stretched surgical tubing. So now for the programming. Currently, there are three of us working on the programming in total. And the really major important part of programming is the autonomous phase, which is when the robot is able to move by itself on its own. For this part, the most important part of it is something called computer vision. In order for computer vision this year, we had the robot identify the team element, which is this cylinder right here. In order to do so, we created this tool, which is open source, which means that other teams are able to use it. And it was able to find the different color values of this, the upper and lower bounds, just made it easier for the robot to identify the team element. We also uh, used April tags through our easy open CV library, which helped in really just localizing and finding the position of the team element. And that overall helps in making sure that the odometry is accurate, which my partner will now be going into. Um, so for the odometry of the robot, we use um, dead wheel encoders so that the robot can uh, tell where it is exactly on the field. And this helps with odometry because it makes it more accurate. 
Another programming challenge this year that we had to go through was um, finding a way to make the arm work. So the way our arm works is basically by operating off of um, inverse kinematics, which basically means that if you wanted to move your arm somewhere, you would just kind of move it. But the way our robot works, it can't really just do that. You'd have to move certain parts of the robot to different angles in order to achieve the entire arm reaching one point, um, which involves a lot of uh, complex math um, that we had to get down. And that was a really big challenge for us in programming. Throughout the past few minutes, we've gone over the various functions and features of the robot, as well as the functions and features of the team. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to direct them to any of us as our programmers start up the robot for a physical demonstration. Before we do that, really quickly, I want to explain some of our outreach events because you know that we are like, everywhere. We, you can see us with a lot of community events and technological events. So some of the events that we have been to are the Supper Day and the Supper Street Fair. We set up a booth that students can come and drive our robot and see like if they're interested in joining our team in the future. We also are um, having local Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts coming in. And in May, we are going to meet with them once a week to help them like gain a badge so that they can have like a robotic badge or like a designing badge to put on their stash. And we also are doing... Um, with our local elementary schools, teaching them like the basics of CAD and just like how to like make a house on like scratch and things like that. And and we also, one of our technological um, events was NEEF. It's the world's largest astronomy and space expo. And with this, we were able to meet so many professionals who can teach us so many things. Um, last year we attended and we were able to meet Alice Bowman she was the missions operator from the mission to Pluto, which was really amazing to learn from her. And she was able to give us so much more advice on what we can do to make our robot better. Oh, yeah. And we also plan um, in April, April, late, late April, we're planning to go in again and attend the NEAT conference. We are also planning to attend the Tri-State Engineering Expo to show our robot to many more professionals. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So as you're putting down the, the robot, I just have to tell you, I'm, I'm so impressed by your knowledge of inverse kinematics. Um, that's, that's impressive. And the dead wheel encoding is uh, another aspect that clearly you've mastered. But even more impressive than, than the engineering aspects or the coding aspects is also what people don't always associate with robotics teams, which is your incredible, um, um, incredible high level soft skills, if you will, right? Those, the, this, your speaking skills, your collaboration, your level of creativity, seeing the big picture and also recognizing that as a team, you need to empower yourselves to become the leaders. And uh, that's what's really powerful here. And I really have to give a lot of credit to uh, the coaches, um, you know, Mr. Mugno being one of them over on the side there. <laughs> You know, truly a, a testament to who a, a coach is with regards to a robotics team that he has been with you and helped guided you along every step of your journey, yet he is allowing all of you to shine while he's over there being very proud of the work that you've done. And we are also very proud. So congratulations on a great season. If you'd like to go ahead and, and demonstrate, take the floor. I just wanted to make sure that I, that I shared with you how proud and impressed we are with everything that you're doing. All right. Uh, so the robot's always fun to talk about, but I, I always think it's more fun to see it in action, too. Um, so if, is it moving? <laughs> okay. Uh, in the meantime, as we mentioned before, there are these pixels, uh, the hexagonal pieces. I'm going to put a couple of them on the floor here for demonstration. Um, so the, the main element of our challenge this year was to pick up those pixels that you can see on the floor and place them on a sloped board. So what we did with our claw here... Uh, that Ethan explained before, uh, as we designed it specifically to pick up these pixels. Uh, <laughs> it's usually on a foam floor, but um, <laughs> it, it is a different surface, yeah. Um, <laughs> there we go. Um, so that's the... <laughs> Um, after we've picked up the pixels, the arm will 
rotate over to the back of the robot where normally there would be a plastic board there that it would release the pixel onto, it would slide down into place uh, and be in position to score some points. <laughs> uh, another feature of the arm that Another feature of the arm that we can't really properly demonstrate here because we don't have our field, uh, I think we have a picture of it, is the rigging system. Uh, if you could give the robot a spin, uh, you can see that little C channel, uh, the little hook on there. What that does, as you can see in this picture here next to me, uh, is it hooks onto a bar and can actually lift the weight of the entire robot just by lowering the arm. Uh, and uh, to spend it fully off the ground, uh, it's one of uh, one of the Pratter achievements, and it's kind of an example of Occam's razor, where it's it's a surprisingly simple solution to what sounds like a very complicated problem. Um, and then another part of the robot that uh, I'm very proud of is the drone launcher, uh, um, yeah, lower this. Uh, which, as you can see, there's a little blue paper airplane here uh, that I explained before is hooked up to an elastic piece, um, and I think we're gonna launch that in a sec. Uh, heads up. Uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> there we go. So that um, that uh, would actually land slightly outside the field. Um, in depending on how far from the field it landed, closer to the field was uh, more points. Um, and then this is kind of one of the most fundamental parts of the robot, but it's something that we as a team are very proud of. Uh, if you look on uh, how the robot is moving around. We use something called mechanum wheels, uh, which use vector forces and slanted smaller wheels making up the larger wheels to allow the robot to move side to side on diagonals, as you can see there. Uh, and these ones are prefabricated, but something that we're very proud of as a team actually is uh, within First Tech Challenge, we were the first team to ever use this type of wheel. Uh, initially, we designed them from scratch, 3D printed um, our own custom parts, you know, custom molded the actual rubber for the tires. Um, and within a couple of years, uh, there were companies producing them and selling them, and now they're almost every team within First Tech Challenge uses that. And uh, the first year that we had those, uh, act it actually got us to the world championships for our innovative design, uh, which given that that was a strategy that worked, we are working on something similar at the moment, which I will give Ethan a chance to explain. So since our other wheel design we created worked so well, we're actually currently developing another type of wheel called a differential swerve drive. So basically how it works is when both of these outer gears on the top and bottom are turned in the same direction, they will uh, it'll rotate the body of the wheel. Okay, when they're both turned in the same direction, it rotates the body of the wheel, but if you turn the motors opposite, it actually rotates the inner wheel itself. And this basically works similar to how the mechanum does, where you can move side to side, almost strafing. But uh, the upside is it has way more traction without all the little free spinning wheels on it. So we hope this will get, may help us get to Worlds this year. Or next. Well, it's still this year. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And we, we just want to say thank you to district administration for showing us so much support and giving us the opportunity to create cool things like this. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you so much. Great job. So just a few weeks ago, our district hosted um, our district art show with, with just another incredible display of, um, of student talent here at Suffern Central. Um, just incredible displays of art everywhere from kindergarten all the way up through 12th grade. And so tonight we are joined by several of our district art teachers and students in recognition of March, which is Youth Art Month. They're here to share with us how our students are connecting through art education across all grade levels, as well as celebrate those students who have won awards at the local and state level. Tracy Burgess, the high school art department chairperson, will be leading the presentation. I'm so happy to endorse March as Youth Art Month and support the celebration and importance of art in our schools. So Ms. Burgess, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Gunderson. 
Um, I am proud to introduce to you, because I don't want to do the speaking, I'm going to introduce you to two of my board members from the National Art Honor Society who are going to tell you all about the busy month we've had celebrating Youth Art Month. So first I'd like to invite Natalia up to the podium. Hello, my name is Natalia Medina and I'm the treasurer of the National Art Honor Society. Thank you for allowing us a moment to acknowledge and celebrate Youth Art Month this evening. Youth Art Month is a national celebration of the importance of the visual arts and education. Suffering Central celebrated Youth Art Month with our K-12 art show opening on March 14th, where over 500 works of art were on display. We had a well-attended reception, and then families continued to view the show on the 15th and 16th. This is the first time we have held the district-wide art show over three days, and by all accounts, it was very successful. Additionally, at the art show, our students enrolled in ceramics, held their annual Empty Bowls fundraiser, and raised $1,200 no, no, for our local food boundaries, <laughs> pantries. This year, the National Art Honor Society once again received two proclamations and a citation for Youth Art Month. The proclamations are from County Executive Ed Day and Senator Bill Weber, and the citation is from Assemblyman Carl Rabinek. We thank our local government officials for proclaiming March 2024 as Youth Art Month. Additionally, we would like each of you for your thank each of you for your continued support of the visual arts at Suffering Central. As per tradition, we have brought you a fun activity as a way of thanks. When ready, you can simply activate there. She's Rihanna sitting them out. When ready, you can simply activate the paint on the card with water. After she hands them out, I would like to thank Rihanna Hamilton or invite Rihanna Hamilton, our story, into the podium. <laughs> All month long, students have been participating in activities that emphasize the importance of art education. Members of the National Art Honor Society visited the middle school and all five elementary schools to continue our tradition of creating art artist trading cards, which allows our students across grade levels to connect with each other through a shared art experience. Additionally, we have been celebrating our students who had artwork chosen for various art shows excited outside the walls of Suffern Central. Junior Ladia Barnes recently won a second place award at a juried exhibit sponsored by the New York State United Teachers for her painting titled, Slipping Through My Fingers. Sophia Bear from the middle schools have also had her weaving chosen for a juried exhibit. And 18 students from grades um, second through 12 will have their artwork displayed through the New York State Art Teachers Association Legislative Art Exhibit being released digitally at the end of the month. Finally, students across all grades participated in the New York State Youth Art Month flag design contents, uh, contest, and we are proud to say that Suffern Central had nine honorable mention winners. Our art teachers are now going to present these students with their certificates and prizes. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia and Rihanna. So I am, uh, not only am I department chair at the high school, but I also have the pleasure of being the co-chair of um, NYSADA's Youth Art Month. Um, so it's always exciting to me when our students win because it makes me proud when I'm um, up at the state doing things at the state level. Uh, so first up on the screen, you're gonna see these are our three um, proclamations, citations. Uh, from our public officials, which we're very happy to have. And then if I'm going to change this, I think, right? How do I do this? Do I just <laughs> bring it back there and go like that? To there, I'm pressing that. No, it doesn't like me. Oh, there he goes. Okay, there's Ladia and Sophia winning at the juried student exhibit. And now we're going to talk about our flag design winners. Um, so every year, um, since about, uh, I think it was 1965, they have been, uh, the National Art 
Educators Association and the Council for Art Education have been celebrating Youth Art Month. And they asked each state to hold a flag design contest um, for a state flag that then gets hung at the National Art Education Association's uh, conference each year. So we had this year from Suffern Central, 356 students enter the contest. Um, we had a record number of students from across the state enter, and we had 1,765 flag designs. We were probably had the most honorable mentions of any of the school districts uh, in the state of New York, and we had nine. So we would like to honor those students tonight. So I'm gonna kick it off by um, calling up my student who won the honorable mention, and then I'm gonna have each of the other art teachers come up. So our first honorable mention goes to Aurelia Reason. And the students are getting a certificate and a little prize package from the New York State Art Teachers Association. I just have to lower that after Tracy. <laughs> okay, I have two students who I'm very proud to say received honorable mentions. One is Eileen Yu. Eileen, please can get your certificate. Congratulations. And the other is Eliza Power. And there she is. I can see you for sure. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations, Eliza. And representing the middle school, I'd like to um, announce Madison Rosado for her dreaming in art. There's Aurelius. There's Eileen. Eliza. Madison. There's Madison. And we had two winners from Viola Elementary School. The first is a fifth grader. I'd like to call up Arush Ali. Congratulations, Arush. Come on down. We're so proud of all of our students. We also have a fourth grader from Viola, Lila Adams. Congratulations, Lila. And at Cherry Lane, we had two winners. The first is Sadia Amir. Thanks to the can make it tonight. And Jacqueline Romer. And Montebello had a winner as well, Eva Stecker. So on behalf of the K through 12 art staff and the um, all the students, uh, we just want to say thank you for supporting the visual arts. Um, it obviously is very important to us and we feel very well supported here at Suffern Central and you make all the things that we do very possible. So we appreciate it and we appreciate you acknowledging the importance of Youth Art Month and in allowing us to come here tonight. So thank you. Thanks so much, Ms. Burgess, all the teachers, and congratulations to all the students who are award winners. Thank you for sharing your, your creativity with us and for making us so proud of you as your artwork gets shown off in so many amazing places. Of course, this is budget season, and so um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't remind the public that the great work that our students do, whether it's in robotics or in the arts, the theater arts in their classrooms on the athletic fields wouldn't be possible without the strong support, the strong financial support of our school community. 
I just wanted to make sure I put that out there. And we're going to have a presentation about from the budget from Mr. Castlane, Dr. Castlane, in a few minutes. No, don't do it. I know you're very excited to share this information, um, but I just want to make a few additional comments as well and recognize that some of our students do need to uh, to leave after uh, after this portion of the meeting. Um, it's been a few weeks since we've had a meeting, and in the meantime, um, we've had a hockey state championship. So I'd like to congratulate our district hockey team on bringing home that incredible achievement. The second time in three years. And uh, what was particularly impressive was to see that we had a stronger, significantly stronger cheering section all the way up in Buffalo than our opposing team, who was based about 20 minutes away. That was really a testament to our to our community and how much we come out and support one another. And certainly they made us proud by uh, by bringing home that ultimate uh, championship. That was really impressive. I'd also like to um, congratulate our directors, our students um, for Into the Woods. What an incredible performance this past weekend at Suffern High School. And just to, to, to wrap our heads around this, and, and those of us, the longer I'm in suffering, the longer so many of you are in suffering, we almost become accustomed to these wonderful productions that our students and adults put together. Um, and I just want to remind folks that we had over 130 students participate in the production of Into the Woods, which for a typical high school production is unheard of. We have three different sets of casts. So many students get to participate in a theatrical production because of the amount of time that our directors and advisors put into this and the support, once again, from our community. We have about 70 students in the student-only pit orchestra. Many high schools will have several professionals that they hire and a smattering of students who perform in a pit. 70 students who, by the way, played for almost three hours straight with a little 15 minute intermission, some very complex music. And then of course, for those of you that attended the musical, the lighting, the sound, the stage and set design, all done by our students, just simply incredible. So hats off, big bravo to all of those involved in Into the Woods. Um, I was blown away. It was a wonderful theatrical production. And once again, thank you to the community for helping to make these and so many other Suffering Central activities for our students a reality. Thus concludes my superintendent's report. Thank you. Uh, I'll just say just, I mean, so many wonderful things, the, the robotics, the, the, all our, all our winners for the, um, for national, uh, for youth art month is just amazing. And it really, um, it, it really does show just, you know, how robust the, the programs and, you know, what, what we have to offer our students here in Suffern is, it, it really is fantastic. And, when you say the number of students out loud that participated in the production, you don't. If you're watching the show, you probably don't realize that there's 130 different students that are partaking in that play. One in in some, you know, in some way, it it really is amazing. So, um, congratulations to everybody, and. We're going to move to our budget presentation. So everybody that wants to run and just get out of here now, this is your chance. Can, can I inter in, interrupt you for one second? Would it be possible for our student artists to come up and pose for a picture with, with the board? Is that, is that okay? Yeah. yeah. That'd be great.
No. I, I am I'm, I'm jolly. I'm not a wreck. Cowboy. Cowboy. So maybe we should have done the budget presentation first. I was going to say, I'm, I don't blame anyone. I mean, I, I wouldn't take it personally. No, not none. Absolutely not. All right, Dr. Castellane um, is going to go through our next budget presentation, and um, this will be the third, the third one we've done so far. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Castellane. Thank you, and thank you for having me back. <clears throat> so previous, previously, I discussed the New York State proposed budget and how it was going to impact school districts, specifically the foundation aid. So. The conversations in the literature that's coming out of Albany leads us to believe that we will indeed have 3% increase in our foundation aid. We'll know in about a week after the state votes on their budget. So for this presentation, what I did was I built in the 3% so the board and the public can see how that would impact our budget. So prior to getting there, I want to talk about some of the new major cost increase. Now, these are increase that... Some of them you've seen before. One of them specifically uh, that I want to talk about is the ARP funding. So after COVID, the federal government uh, released funds to all the school districts. Our district received roughly over $4 million in the ARP grant alone. So this year, we have about $1.3 million in salaries and benefits that are being paid by the grant. Since we're not since we've learned that we need some of these supports, social emotional supports, to continue to meet our student needs, we've decided to absorb some of those in the budget. We talked about the NICER insurance increase in 16%. I have been in constant conversations with NICER, and two of the main driving factors with the increase in insurance premiums amongst districts in the lower Hudson Valley, Long Island, et cetera, are really due to some legislative changes recently and to an increased number of claims amongst all the school districts. Health benefits, we can account for those to continually go up. As everyone knows, benefits are the one thing that we, we see not decreasing. So I wanted to put some numbers on there. Uh, retirement fund, this is our ERS and TRS. So just to kind of formulate that, 10% for you, it's about $330,000 that we'll be putting into the budget for that. And our transportation costs, which is an increase in $500,000 for next year. I'll talk a little bit more about transportation in a later slide. <clears throat> so along with the major cost increase, sorry, there we go. I wanted to talk about some of the efficiencies. So one of the ones which we hope to come to fruition is a 3% increase in foundation aid. So for our district, should we receive it, it'll be approximately 700, just over $750,000. So currently our foundation aid is only set to increase $40,000. So ultimately this will take us up to just over 790, which you'll see on the later slide. The restructuring of Viola Elementary School, while we know that the restructuring plan was never about the budget, I do think it is important to see that we'll be receiving approximate revenues of $500,000 with an additional $310 plus thousand dollars in utility savings. So roughly over $800,000 will be added back into the budget. And then our transportation partnership with our non-public schools. I briefly talked about this in a previous presentation. And what we're hoping to do is identify 10 schools in the non-public sector that we're able to go out for bid for. And we're hoping that through the bidding process, we're able to capture some additional buses to help with the transportation within the district, as well as some cost savings. So this is a slide that you've seen the last two budget presentations. And really, I just wanted to point out the highlighted, slide, the highlighted line that shows the $794,302 for foundation aid. That number is also reflected here in our revenues. 
And then as we get closer and closer, our next budget meeting, we'll be do, looking at the budget adoption, in which case, depending on the foundation number that comes in, this number will be slightly tightened up, but we're just short of our budget right now. And we do have additional plans in order to make sure that everything works out. So previously I talked about a tax levy and how we would be able to support our budget. Looking at the last three years, we, are, we have been averaging 1.1 to 1.2%. So this average is, this number is right in that average. So we'd be looking for a 1.17%. To put it into dollar amounts for the taxpayer, it's basically what your tax increase was last year on your school taxes. So we know that there's a variety of different housing assessments in Suffern. So it is a little difficult to kind of put up assessed value because it's not a market value. It's really the assessment based off your taxes. So knowing that we have such a variation, it allows you to understand where we were last year, that's what your increase would be for this year. At this time, I'd like to ask the board if they have any comments, questions related to any of the items discussed or not discussed. I have a quick question. Now, when will we know whether the um, governor will approve that uh, monies? Was so we're hoping that next week that they will be voting on the budget. And while we won't be in school, I'll definitely be, <laughs> I'll definitely be watching it. Um, and I'll have a better understanding at which point I'll speak with Dr. Gunderson and we will make any adjustments that we need to do. <clears throat> Excuse me, are there any, any of the board member questions? Um, I, I understand that there's a certain amount of confidence that we're going to get the foundation aid, but um, if we don't, um, does anything have to change in the budget or the tax levy? Yes, I would have to look at about, I, I've been building it off of receiving an additional 750000 So should that not occur, I'll be working with Dr. Gunderson to make some recommendations, in which case he'll take that back to the board to share. Can you go to the previous slide, the one before that? Okay. So we're looking at a budget, a proposed budget of 164.8, 164.8 million for next year. Yep. And did you have the slide before the revenue slide? It's about $118,000 difference. Now, mm -hmm. it should that 3% sway one way or another, I'm hoping that we're able to absorb it. If not, we have had discussions on <clears throat> where we would need to tighten up the budget, so to speak. Okay. So um, a few questions, uh, maybe for, for you or, may, or maybe for Dr. Gunderson. Does the anticipated expenditures take into account all the um, all the hires that we plan to make or in the process of making for next year, that's all already accounted for, right? Okay. Because um, I know, I mean, obviously this year, I know we have, we hired a lot more, a lot more people throughout the year than I think we expected to. So I just want to make sure that, you know, that's all being taken into consideration for, for the budget for this, for, for next year. And of course, I think it's also important to note that we do build in um, additional funding in the event that we do have to hire additional folks, right? Just this year is a perfect example. We had a, uh, a significant increase, if you will, in um, students who were um, new to this country and, and needed additional English language support. And so we had to hire staff to come in and, and provide that type of instruction for students. And so we would be prepared if we had to make similar hires next year. Okay. And I did have another question. The, I mean, it's not really a question. It's just, you know, things that we have some control over, but 
not 100%, right? Is a lot of those expenditures that you showed on one of those first slides, um, you know, the, the nicer, the insurance increases, the transportation increases, the retirement fund increases, you know, a lot of these things are dictated, um, are dictated to us. And they're things that we have to make sure we accommodate. And, you know, unfortunately, they're just always going to be certain areas of the budget where we have very little, very little opportunity to, you know, to, to, to maneuver around those or, or lower them. So are there any other, any, um, anything else? Any other questions for Dr. Castellani? All right. Well, Dr. Castellane, thank you. Did you have to talk? Yeah, I just wanted to add one one piece there. And Dr. Castellane mentioned this, but I just wanted to reinforce the idea that um, you know, I, I really have to give a lot of credit to our uh, New York State Senate and Assembly members who represent our district for their advocacy with regards to further increasing the foundation aid that schools are expecting now. Um, the governor's initial proposal was very light and it put all districts in the state of New York in a difficult uh, position, especially with the expiration of the, the COVID funding grants uh, that a lot of school districts are now absorbing locally. I really wanna thank uh, our representatives for advocating for the public schools to get as much funding as we possibly can. And we certainly look forward to that 3% increase uh, that hopefully we'll find, uh, you know, def get definitive news on next week. And also, I'd like to thank Dr. Castellane, who has uh, not worked on this single-handedly. Uh, he has, uh, you know, worked with his team, his colleagues throughout the county. You're in constant communication with other folks to find out what people are doing and how they're navigating a variety of different situations, as well as you're tapping into your colleagues here around the table um, and other members of our administrative team. So I want to thank you for all the work that you've put into this so far. And as we can see, the budget proposal is a fluid project that uh, needs to be adjusted from, from time to time until we have definitive final information from the state. So this isn't the last we're going to hear of Dr. Castellane. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. One point one one public participation. This is public participation on action items only. If there's anybody who wishes to speak on any of our action items tonight, you can approach the podium. This would also be an opportunity for public participation if there are any comments or questions from the public about the budget. Okay. Seeing as there are none, we will close that portion of the meeting and move to our action items. And tonight we have action items 2.01. 2.01 through 2.16. And I will call for a consent agenda at this time. Is there any action item that a board member wishes to pull from a consent agenda? 2.02. Okay. Any others? Anything else? All right. So the consent agenda for action items 2.01 and 2.03 through 2.16. Do I have a motion? Mr. Frazier? Second? Mrs. Hodge? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those against? Any abstentions? All right, 2.02, .02, this is the civil service personnel report. Do I have a motion? Mr. Shapiro, second. Dr. Nick Pond, discussion? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I saw that we're looking to hire in pupil person L, we're looking to hire two administrative secretaries. Uh, is this to Billy? No, no, no. they would be to uh, okay. Mr. Maltone. Uh, Mr. Maltone. We're looking to hire two administrative secretaries uh, one Spanish speaking, one English speaking. So we're just keeping our options open. We have two individuals that are retiring from that office. So this is just the process of getting approval for the position should we decide to move forward. And the reason we're doing two is, um, depending on the list, we wanna have the, the best chance of getting Absolutely. the most qualified person Agreed. in there. So it's not necessarily one or two, it's we're just right now going through the process of what's called the PO 27, getting approved for the position. And then Dr. Castaldo um, 
and and myself and Dr. Gunnarsson would decide uh, once those individuals have uh, retired, what's the best way to replace and move forward. And fine. Yes. Fine. Thank you. I just didn't understand. It's just the board giving us approval to own the positions, not necessarily hire Film. the positions. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm clear. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? No. Good. All right. Uh, 2.02. .02, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those against? Any abstentions? All right, thank you. And, and I'm surprised, you know, I figured your mic just was like a dummy mic. I didn't even know the battery worked. <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly, right. <laughs> 6.01 board member comments. Are there any board member comments at this time? Mr. Fraser. Yes, I think I'm going to... I'll start by saying what everyone has already said about the robotics team, the Youth Art Month, honorable mention, and also uh, the plays. We have some talent in this district, and it certainly bodes well and make me feel good to know that I'm a part of this wonderful district. Oh, and also uh, the hockey team. Can't forget about the hockey team. So. Go suffering. All right, thank you. Comments, Mr. Shapiro? I have a 17 minute uh, dis discussion. I hope no one minds. I'll start off with suffering hockey. It's no surprise. In 22, we were state champs. In 23, we lost in the finals. This this year, we're state champs again. Um, we are the hockey city of New York State, and I don't think anyone realizes that. And when they hear of suffering, they don't realize that when they play us, they will be suffering. Um, to the robotics team, just, just a great, great job. And... I wanted to ask a question of them, but they kind of ran ran out. I wonder how many of them are freshmen and sophomores and juniors, because it is really they will be just going into the future and probably getting even even better, and you know will be known as the hockey um, school and the robotics school uh, for Youth Art Month. Um, I'm colorblind. But I love art. I, I really appreciate art. I wish I could see the colors that everyone else sees. I see my own colors. Don't ask me what they are, but I know I see them. Um, just the fact that we had um, so many on honorable mention and, and two students, one from the middle school, one from the high, the high school, who uh, were really um, uh, selected as really top artists says a lot about suffering. Um, into the Woods, I was lucky enough to see it. I will tell you, when I heard that Into the Woods was going to be the spring musical, um, I wasn't thrilled because I'm not a fan of Into the Woods until I saw it on Thursday night. I'm now a fan of Into the Woods. I thought that the cast, uh, the entire crew, as Dr. Gunderson said, all of the sets, it was, it was an incredible performance. And also saying that we have three different um, casts that we could just put, put out there, and they're probably all just as equally uh, talented. It really does say a lot about the talent that we have here um, on the ice, on, on fields, working with robots um, in our cl classrooms. It's, it's really amazing. And all of that has to do with what's coming up in less than two months, May 21st, it's a Tuesday. Guess what day it is? Anyone want to guess? Yes. Yes, it's budget, which means we get to exercise our right to vote. And we should all vote, and we should get others to vote. And I'm not saying how you should vote, but vote. It's extremely important of all of the privileges that we have here, and I don't mean in suffering, but I mean nation, nationwide, uh, the ability to vote is, is something that we should be very serious about. And when the chance comes that we can vote, we should be voting. 
So get your friends, get your neighbors, make sure that they are right registered, make sure that they do go out to vote. Uh, no one knows what the weather is going to be like, whether, whether men get paid, whether they're 50% right or 50% wrong, but whatever, whatever the weather is, let's just make sure that everyone goes out to vote. Um, I know that the high, the high school has uh, voter registration for those students who will be turning eight, 18 uh, either on or prior to May 21st. It's very important that we get everyone out to register and then out to vote. Um, thanks to a past budget, uh, we can continue to have all of the success because when you don't pass a budget, things start to get uh, very yucky, as someone once said to me. So please, May 21st, I will be making uh, the same pitch at our next board meeting and at the following board meeting as well, because someone who is very brilliant and very bright uh, reminded me uh, prior to tonight's meeting that I should be saying something, so I'm saying it. May 21st, 6 a.m., if you want to get up that early, until 9, which is almost past my bed bedtime, uh, please get out there and vote and make sure that everyone else does. Thank you. It wasn't 17 minutes, was it? That was close, no. though. It was close. Thank you. So speaking of voting, um, there's a big vote coming up before the budget vote, which is the library vote, which is on our next board meeting, actually the same day, April 16th, which is a Tuesday. So if you're a Suffern library person, go over and vote in Suffern. If you're Slotesburg, vote in Slotesburg. It's a great way to start stretching those voting muscles and getting yourself ready for the big one on May 21st. Um, thank you so much to the robotics team and the um, and the Art Honor Society for being here. You know, we have to make a lot of difficult decisions here and it's really nice to see the students come and show what they're working on. It really makes it all worthwhile and, and makes us all feel, you know, so much better about what we're doing here. Um, it's been a great month here in Suffern, uh, the culmination of a lot of really wonderful activities, the Model UN, DECA, uh, all the athletics, um, the amazing things have been happening the Suffern Middle School Musical, the High School Musical. Uh, at, like Mr. Shapiro, I was not crazy about Into the Woods when I saw it on stage, but I really like the Suffern performance. In fact, uh, we liked it so much we went back and saw it again the next night. Um, so the music's now in my head. Um, but really just um, an amazing, amazing job. We're so lucky in this district to have a really robust arts and theater and music program. That's not the case across the country. So um, it's really, it's wonderful for our students to see that here. Um, and thank you also to the much larger team of parents and guardians um, and volunteers who make all of these events happen, whether you're transporting your kids up to various competitions all over the state or to athletic games or uh, for night after night after night of rehearsal um, I understand that the just the pit orchestra alone, um, somebody calculated they put in something like 160 hours of practice. And really, it showed. Um, it was an amazing, amazing performance. Um, so there's lots to celebrate. Um, one thing also that I did want to say is that um, our students are doing wonderful things and we're coming to the end of a great year. Um, Please, when you're a parent and, you're, and your child is celebrating, please use common sense. Um, we have a lot of inexperienced drivers. We have not well-lit streets. They are narrow. We don't have good public transportation. We don't have good sidewalks. We wanna make sure that all of our kids, all the students are here through graduation and beyond because they're all gonna do great things. So please make sure that kids get home safely from events if your party is 50% of a rager instead of 100% of a rager, that's okay. That's not going to sit on your conscience. So everyone, let's look out for look out for your students, look out for your students' friends, um, and just let's get to graduation beyond with everybody there, everybody healthy, and and accomplishing great things. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? 
All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, <clears throat> all right. 7.01 public participation. Public participation. This is public participation on district-related business. If you wish to speak, um, you can approach the podium and please direct your comments to, to the board. And if you are going to speak, please remember that this is a three-minute speaking session. So please try to keep your comments to three minutes or less. Any speakers? Bad timing. No? All right. Seeing as there are no speakers, we'll close that portion of the meeting and move to superintendent closing comments. I have no further comments. All right. Then um, then I will get ready. Oh, did you have a comment? Happy holiday season. Well, I mean, that's... Thank you. <laughs> so happy holiday season. Thank you, to everybody. Um, our next meeting is April 16th. So that's three weeks from today. And I wish everybody a happy holiday season for whatever it is that you celebrate. Although if you celebrate Passover, I believe that's not even until after our next board meeting. So I'll hold back on the on, on the have a good Passover until until the next meeting. Okay, good. And um, and that that'll and that will do it. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for all the presentations and thanks to the robotics team and everybody else who came and Youth Art Month and the teachers and the advisors and the awards and the students. Uh, really wonderful to see everything tonight. So thank you all very much. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Donnelly, second. Mrs. Hodge, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all very much. This meeting is adjourned. We will see you on April 16th.